In this lesson, we'll look at some more layout features. They're still quite basic, but they serve well in many applications. We'll also look quickly at a feature of NetBeans that might be useful for you in creating layouts. This example code is in the project GUI Layout. Notice that in our main method, we create an instance of the enclosing class GUI Layout and then call its Go method. The Go method simply constructs another class, BorderEx, and calls its Show method. Let's have a look at BorderEx. BorderEx defines a number of private fields, one of which is the frame. The frame is created as a JFrame with the label text border layout. Then it creates five buttons named North button, South button, East button, West button, and Center button, and creates those buttons with text North, South, East, West, and Center. The show method sets the layout to be a border layout. And then each of the buttons is added in turn to the JFrame with what's called a constraint object. The constraint object, in this case, border layout.north and subsequently border layout.south, east, west, and center, respectively, is used by the layout manager to help guide it as to where a component should be positioned. You'll see what these mean in just a moment when we run the code. Then we call this method pack on the frame. What pack does is to tell the frame to ask the layout manager to work out the natural size and position that best suits the contents that have been put into this frame. Then we tell the frame to make itself visible and we should see something. So let's go back to our main program and we'll run this. Here is the resulting output. Notice that the button labeled North is at the top. The one labeled south is at the bottom end. West is off to the left side. East is off to the right side. And center is in the middle. One of the things that's important about a layout manager is not just how it initially positions those components, but also how the available size is allocated to them as you resize the window. So if I grab the corner of this and make it grow, Notice that the components at the north and south retain their natural height. The components at the west and the east elements retain their natural widths. But the north and south components grow and shrink horizontally, while the east and west components grow and shrink vertically. And the one in the center gets all the rest of the space. If you leave any of these components out, the area allocated to them disappears down to nothing. So if you just had north, west, and center, you could set something up that looks quite reasonably like a menu bar across here, a navigation bar down here, and then a workspace in the middle. So that's the border layout. We're going to kill that from here. The next layout is the grid layout. This one sets up a regular grid of components with a specified number of rows and columns. In this case, we create the layout for it using the grid layout and we specify that it has three rows and two columns. The frame that we put it into is labeled with the title grid layout. Then we create an array of six buttons labeled button one, two, three, four, five, and six. We use a loop to add all the buttons into the frame. Notice there's no constraint objects in this. The order we add them to the frame will determine the position that they adopt. Then we pack it again and set it visible. Let's add this to our main program. Save that and run it. And this time we notice that we have the grid equally divides the vertical space into three subdivisions and the horizontal width of the thing is divided into the two columns that we asked for. So that one's our grid layout. Again, we'll close this. The final layout to look at is called the flow layout. The flow layout simply lays out the components in the container like words in a text editor. So what we'll find is that these buttons are laid from left to right and just spread out horizontally. As we resize the frame, then we'll get some of those buttons being pushed down onto second and third lines. 
So in this case, we create our frame, we give it its label, we create an array of buttons, we give them different names. You'll notice this one is designed so that it's extra wide and this one is a little narrower. We create the frame and add the layout manager to it. This is the flow layout. And then we add each of the buttons to the frame. We pack it, we set it visible again. So let's add this one to our main program and have a look at what that does. We'll edit the code, save the file and run it again. And here is the interesting one this time. Notice the buttons are just laid out left to right like words in a text editor. If I make this layout bigger, it doesn't do anything useful with the extra space. But if I make it smaller, then the moment those buttons don't fit, it moves them round onto a new line just like word wrapping on a text editor would. So that's the flow layout. The next thing we need to do is to look at a builder tool that allows us to build graphical user interfaces using a drag and drop technique. This is more or less unique to NetBeans, but what we're going to do is we're going to right click on our package, say new, and then see here it says JFrame form. And I'm going to call this builder layout. Click finish. And if I double click on this tab, I can get the benefit of some extra space. Now what I have here is a workspace. And over on this side, I have a menu of all the components that I can add to my JFrame. So I could take, for example, a label and drag it across. As I do so, you'll notice that it offers me the chance to snap it to certain positions. So now it's snapped to the top left corner with a little bit of border space around it. And I can change its text by double clicking on it and then adding label text. Hit enter, we'll take that. Then I could grab a button, for example. There's a button, drag that across and I can arrange, notice the baseline under the text, that will line up those text baselines so they look properly lined up together. If I drop that there and then grab this right hand edge, I can tell the system I want the right hand edge to attach itself to the right hand edge of the layout. Then I might grab, for example, a text area, move that across and I can stick that up tight in the top left area underneath everything else and then bring its bottom right hand edge down here and get it to click in there. There's a nice feature of this tool that if I click on this button, preview the design, it will actually build it right there and then and I can see what it looks like and I can resize it and check that the dynamic behavior I've got is what I was hoping for. Well, let's close that. Something else you'll want to see is that if you click on the source button, you can actually see the source code that this is generating. So you can interact with it, for example, and add your listeners as you need to. Well, let's double click this again, make it shrink back to its normal size. What I now need to do is to add this to my main program. So if I come across to GUI layout.java, I can now come in here and I can create an instance of this class, new builder layout, and then I can call the set visible true on it and put the semicolon in save everything click on here and then if i run this one you should see that in addition to the other three windows that were created manually we have this new window we can click on the button there's nothing attached to it we can type in the editor field and so forth this one by default if we click on the close button that one by default will shut down the vm NetBeans, by the way, uses a special layout manager called the Group Layout. It's very powerful. You can use it yourself at a source code level. Its original intent was to support drag and drop builder tools like the one we've just looked at. In addition to that, there are several other layout managers you might come across, including something called the Grid Bag Layout and the Box Layout. So in this lesson, we've introduced the Border, Grid and Flow Layouts and had a look at how NetBeans graphical builder tool might help you with more complex layouts.